Ever wondered what your gut's been hiding from you? Well, grab your hazmat suit because AI just revealed something wild. Your daily deposits might be worth their weight in gold. No, seriously. Your gut is about to make someone a fortune, and today we're diving deep into the billion-dollar secrets living in your intestines. Don't worry, we'll hold our noses. Hello, my brilliant biological wonders. Get ready for a gut check like no other. Today, we're joined by experts who are using AI to revolutionize medicine, starting with what you left in the bathroom this morning. Yes, we're talking about poop transplants, designer probiotics, and how artificial intelligence is turning our waste into medical gold. Trust me, by the end of this episode, you'll never look at your toilet the same way again. Welcome back to the deep dive. You know, we get a lot of interesting listener mail, but this one, uh, this one brought back memories. It all started with a previous episode, a wild conversation about AI. And let's just say someone, Gwen, had a rather, shall we say, unconventional thought. All right. All right. I confess I was pretty eager to jump into this topic, too. And you, our astute listener, reminded us of our promise to dive deep into the world of AI and poo. I have to admit, when Gwen first mentioned it, I definitely flashed back to that South Park episode. But you've sent over some intriguing research papers from Stanford Healthcare, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, even the World Journal of Gastroenterology. So clearly there's more to this than meets the eye. We're talking about fecal microbiota transplantation, or FMT. And you're right, it sounds like something straight out of science fiction. But the science is real and it's already making waves in the medical world. Okay, so before we get into the nitty gritty, let's address the elephant in the room or maybe the uh, deposit in the Petri dish. Why are we even talking about transplanting poo in the first place? It all comes down to the incredible world inside our guts, the gut microbiota. We're talking trillions of bacteria, fungi, viruses, a whole ecosystem living within us. And for a long time, we kind of underestimated them, thought of them as just there. Right. Like the roommates you never really see, but occasionally eat your leftovers? Kind of. But here's the thing. Those roommates are way more important than we realized. Mind blown yet? Your gut isn't just digesting your questionable midnight snacks. It's actually chatting with your brain. Think of it like having a second brain in your belly. Except this one's been keeping secrets. Until now. They aren't just passive passengers. They're actively involved in our health and, I mean, everything. Digestion, obviously, but also our metabolism, our immune system, even our brains. Wait, seriously. Our gut bacteria are connected to our brains. It's true. And the research is only just beginning to uncover how deep these connections go. But what we do know is that an imbalance in our gut microbiota, what scientists call dysbiosis, is linked to a whole range of health issues. And we're not just talking digestive issues, although those are definitely on the list. Think obesity, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, even conditions like diabetes and multiple sclerosis are showing up in the research. Okay, now my mind is officially blown. So how do we fix this imbalance? That's where FMT comes in. Exactly. The idea behind FMT is to take a healthy gut microbiome, a sample from a carefully screened donor, and transplant it into someone who needs it. It's like giving your gut a bacterial reboot. And get this, it's already being used with incredible success. Researchers at the Chinese University of Hong Kong have found that for treating recurrent C. difficile infections, which are notoriously tough to kick with traditional methods, FMT boasts a cure rate of over 85%. 85%. Okay, that blows those antibiotics out of the water. I remember those days, not fun. Hold on to your lunch, folks. That's right. We're talking about an 85% success rate for something doctors have been struggling with for decades. Traditional antibiotics only work about 20 to 30% of the time for these nasty infections. It's like upgrading from a bicycle to a rocket ship, and AI is the pilot. But before we get into the how, what other conditions could FMT potentially help with? You mentioned a whole bunch earlier. We're still in the early stages for a lot of them, but the potential is huge. Those Stanford researchers, for example, are looking into FMT as a treatment for irritable bowel syndrome, especially cases that develop after a C. difficile infection. So even after the infection is gone, FMT could help with lingering gut issues. Good to know. But what about those other conditions you mentioned, like obesity or even multiple sclerosis? That's where it gets really interesting. 
Researchers are finding links between the gut microbiome and conditions we never thought were connected, even our mental health. There's a fascinating paper in the World Journal of Gastroenterology that explores how FMT could potentially manage metabolic diseases like type 2 diabetes by basically rebalancing the gut ecosystem. It's incredible to think that the bacteria in our gut could be impacting such a wide range of health issues. It's a whole new frontier. And that's where AI comes in. Right now, FMT is basically a one-size-fits-all approach. We find a healthy donor, process the sample, and transplant it, hoping for the best. So how could AI change that? Imagine this. Instead of a generic, healthy gut transplant, we could use AI to analyze the massive amounts of data in both the donor's and the recipient's gut microbiome. We could pinpoint the specific bacteria that might benefit your individual condition and create a truly personalized treatment. Wait, so like designer probiotics? Waffs, exactly. Personalized probiotics on steroids. Think about more targeted treatments, potentially fewer side effects, and maybe even preventing these conditions in the first place. Okay, now that is seriously cool. But with any new treatment, there are always challenges and things to consider, right? Absolutely. Safety is paramount. The researchers at Stanford really emphasize that donor selection is critical with rigorous screening for any potential pathogens or health risks. We're talking about transplanting living organisms, after all. Right. You definitely don't want to trade one problem for another. Exactly. And on top of that, there's a need for more research to fully understand the long-term effects of FMT. It sounds like there's still a lot we need to learn, but the potential is incredible. And that brings us to the AI side of things. Are there any specific challenges in using AI to analyze the gut microbiome? This is where it gets really complex. The gut microbiome is incredibly diverse and constantly changing. We're talking about trillions of microorganisms, each with their own set of genes and interactions. It's a huge data puzzle. So how do you even begin to analyze something that vast and dynamic? That's the beauty of AI. You can sift through massive data sets, identify patterns, and make connections that would take humans years to uncover. But even with AI, it's a challenge. We need to develop sophisticated algorithms that can account for all that complexity and make accurate predictions about which bacteria will have a positive impact for each individual. It's like finding a needle in a haystack, but the haystack is made of trillions of tiny wriggling needles. Laughs. A very apt analogy. And to add to the challenge, our understanding of the gut microbiome is constantly evolving. New research is being published all the time, revealing new connections and interactions. So the AI needs to be able to learn and adapt as our knowledge grows. Exactly. We need AI systems that are not only powerful, but also flexible and adaptable, capable of incorporating new information and refining their predictions as we learn more. It's a huge task, but the potential payoff is enormous. This is all very promising, but what about the practical side of things? How would personalized FMT even work? Would you need to find a specific donor for each person? That's a great question, and it's something researchers are actively exploring. The World Journal of Gastroenterology paper highlights the importance of the donor-acceptor combination, essentially finding the best match between the donor's gut microbiome and the recipient's needs. So instead of a random healthy gut transplant, you'd be looking for a donor whose gut microbiome is already primed to benefit the recipient. Exactly. And that's where AI could really shine. Imagine being able to analyze a database of potential donors and identify the one whose gut microbiome is the perfect match for your unique condition. It could revolutionize the way we approach FMT. Picture this. Instead of taking generic probiotics that might help, AI could design a custom bacterial cocktail specifically for your gut. It's like having a personal trainer for your intestines except this one knows exactly which microscopic athletes your team needs. This is some next level stuff, but let's talk about those practical considerations. How do you actually collect and prepare a poo sample for transplantation? I mean, I'm assuming it's not as simple as just, you know, scooping it into a baggie. Lass. Yeah. No, definitely not. <laughs> it's actually a very rigorous process with strict protocols to ensure safety and efficacy. That paper from the Chinese researchers actually outlines a very comprehensive approach to stool donor screening and sample preparation. It's fascinating, really. Okay, so walk us through it. What are the key steps? First, you need to find a suitable donor. And this is where it gets serious. We're talking extensive health questionnaires, interviews, blood tests, stool tests. They're checking for everything from infectious diseases to underlying health conditions that could impact the gut microbiome. Wow, that's a lot more intense than I imagined. So let's say you find the perfect donor. What happens next? How do you actually collect and process the uh, donation? 
They use a special sterile container, usually over a toilet, to ensure there's no contamination. Then the sample is carefully transported to the lab where it's processed in a controlled environment. And process means? Essentially, they blend the sample with a saline solution and sometimes glycerol to help preserve the bacteria. Then they filter it to remove any solid matter, leaving behind a liquid suspension that contains all those precious gut microbes. Okay, so no chunks, got it, and then that liquid gold gets transplanted into their recipient. Exactly. And there are different ways to do that. So we've got our liquid gold carefully extracted and prepped. How does it actually get into the recipient? There are a few different methods that can be delivered via colonoscopy, endoscopy, or even through a nasogastric tube, depending on the patient's needs and what the doctor recommends. Okay, so you're basically giving someone a whole new set of gut roommates, but do these new bacteria automatically take over? Is it an instant takeover? It's a bit more nuanced than that. The new bacteria need time to settle in, and the success of the transplant depends partly on the recipient's existing gut environment. Ah, so it's like prepping the soil before planting a garden. You need to create the right conditions for those new microbes to thrive. Precisely. Sometimes doctors might use antibiotics or other medications to help make space for the new bacteria. Yeah. And even after the transplant, there's ongoing monitoring to make sure everything is going smoothly. That makes sense. So what happens after the transplant? Is it a set it and forget it situation? Or are there things people need to do to support those new gut buddies? It's definitely not set it and forget it. Researchers are finding that diet plays a huge role in the long-term success of FMT. Right. You've got to feed those new bacteria, give them what they need to flourish. Makes total sense. Exactly. Your diet is crucial for nourishing those new bacteria and helping them flourish. In fact, personalized nutrition is a growing area of interest in FMT research. So in the future, we might be talking about personalized diets tailored to our unique gut microbiome. That's wild. Precisely. This is where AI could be incredibly powerful. Imagine receiving not only a personalized FMT treatment, but also a customized diet plan to support your new gut ecosystem. We're talking about next level gut health here. Wow, from poo to personalized medicine, this deep dive has been quite the journey. It really has. And, and the most exciting part is we're only just beginning to scratch the surface of what we can learn about the gut microbiome and its impact on our health. Hmm. It's mind-blowing. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the incredible science behind FMT to the potential of AI to personalize this groundbreaking treatment. Listener, we've thrown a lot of information at you today, but we want to leave you with this thought. If you could optimize your gut microbiome for one specific benefit, say, improve sleep and Enhance focus, a stronger immune system, what would you choose? And more importantly, why? Let us know. Until next time, keep those deep dive questions coming. Well, my fascinating fecal philosophers. We've traveled from your gut to the cutting edge of AI, and what a journey it's been. Who knew your bathroom breaks could be so valuable? As AI continues to decode the secrets of our microbiome, one thing's becoming clear. We're on the brink of a medical revolution, and it's starting right there in your gut. Keep questioning, keep exploring, and maybe think twice before you flush. That's pure gold you're sitting on. Until next time, stay curious and remember, your gut might be lying, but science never does. Mm -hmm.